What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how I'm gonna install my pedal seat onto the hatch of my Jumbo. So let me show you what I've got. This is the base I'm going with and this is the Swivel Easy. This is a four by eight lock and pin and this is the non-threaded base okay so you don't screw it into the base you simply push the base of the post into here and it locks in place and when you're done you can just pull it right back out so that's the base i'm going with so this is the seat pole i've got this is also by swivel easy and a c-sense seat mount and then i stuck with tempress guys for the seat this is the casting seat um the pro max i think it's called pro Bax. That's what it's called, Probex. All right, and this is a pretty cool seat. It looks very comfortable. Can't wait to try this out. I've actually never had a, I, I call it a butt seat. Never had a butt seat before. Um, so I was anxious to get this in there. So originally the plan was to install the base into the deck of the boat. That plan didn't work out because if you know from my previous videos, I had to move the foot control pedal back some. So originally yeah, the plan was to mount this here into the deck of the boat, but I had to change that when I moved this back. Good thing for me, I was able to correct a huge mistake I made with this. So I'm very happy this is here, it all works out. Link to the top of the screen to avoid the mistake I made when installing the trolling motor and the foot control pedal. So here we are, the solution for the pedal seat is to mount it here onto the hatch. And you wanna be careful doing this cause you gotta make sure that you reinforce the hatch completely to be able to take the kind of pressure this seat will put on the hatch lid. So I've already built the hatch. I haven't attached it to the framing yet. So that'll be the first thing I do is to attach the hatch. I won't show that in this video because I have a full hatch video. Link at the top of the screen if you're interested in seeing how to install hatches in your John boat. So I will skip that part in this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this lid install a hinge for it and get back to you. All right, got the hatch on. I installed the hinge, so the hatch is in place. What I did right here is just mark an inch out from the hatch lid, and that's to compensate for the ledge right here of the framing that the hatch rests on. And where that comes into play is, when I mount this, I need to make sure that I am, these screws don't hit this ledge underneath, okay? so. I've got it marked, do not go past this arrow right here. So the next step is for me to cut out the aluminum sheeting that I'll use to reinforce the base. And how this will work is I'll have aluminum sheeting underneath the base. So this base will be on this side. I'll use a hole saw, drill this out so this sticks through. And then when I drill through the lid, I'll be ready to secure the base to the lid using the aluminum sheeting that will be right here. And I'll probably go with two pieces because I'm using 0 0.090 and I want to double it up and make it extra strong. I plan to have an overlap of two inches around this just to give it some extra stability. So any leaning on this seat, will it'll take the pressure off of the actual wood by having the sheeting come about two inches out. That's what I'm planning to do. All right, so let's get a couple pieces of aluminum cut out and I'll be back. All right guys, it's actually the next day and just wanna add one more thing. Just thought about it this morning. Instead of just having the aluminum sheeting underneath the lid, I'm also gonna add a piece of one by six plywood underneath. So I've already cut my aluminum and the plate is gonna be about this big. I'm going pretty big because I really wanna support the pedestal seat. How this will work is I'll have a one by six piece of wood here and then I'll just support that as well with a piece of aluminum sheeting. So right here, I don't know if you guys can see, but I've already, right here I've already cut out and painted the other piece. I was originally going with two pieces of aluminum, but I think I'm gonna end up with one and I'm going with the painted piece. I've already painted it black to match the underside of the lid. I'm actually going with treated wood this time. The main reason I'm going with treated wood is because I don't want to have to take the time to stain it and the full cure time for the stain I'm using, which is the spar urethane. Excellent stuff, but it takes three days to fully cure and dry. And I don't have three days. I don't want to take three days to do that. I'm only using a 12 by six piece, a very small piece. One thing I've researched on why you should not use treated wood is because it does not play well with aluminum and can, I believe, deteriorate the aluminum. In this case, how I'm using it, I will be painting this so there'll be a layer of protection between the plywood and the aluminum. Both sides of this aluminum right here will be painted black. So I'm hoping that will hold up, guys. If it doesn't, I'll have to make some changes later. Hopefully I won't. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my cuts on this wood and then spray paint this black. And what I'm going with is 
stuff I've used throughout the build. This is what I've used for inside the hatches. This is really, really good paint, guys. Rust-Oleum. I've only found this one right here, this universal paint at Lowe's. Home Depot, at least where I live, does not sell this in black. And this one works on wood, metal, plastic, masonry. It works on everything. I love this stuff right here. I want to make sure that the support I'm putting underneath this lid does not hit this framing. And the way that I'm going to do this is the support will go right along this edge, but will come out two inches on all of the remaining three edges. And I'm just doing that because I feel that'll give me extra support underneath. What I also did was make sure that this is centered to the foot pedal tray. So next, I'm just going to take a measurement to know where I need to use a hole saw. And I'm going with a one and three quarter inch hole saw bit. I'll go ahead and measure this up, mark where I need to drill my hole and drill the hole and then flip the mount over. I'll be able to push it through the hole and then start marking the other holes I need to drill out. So I measured this up. The hole is going to start two and a quarter inches up from the edge of this lid. And I'm also putting the tape measure center to the hole so I know where the center is for my hole. And I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not going super mechanical on this, but these this is the center of the tape measure. That'll be my center mark. I'm at two and a quarter right here. I'm just gonna carefully slide this out without moving the tape measure. I'm just gonna put a new piece of tape right where I need to start my hole. So I'm just gonna move this away and then mark my center. My center is right there. That's a horrible arrow. Let's go guys, we're going in. Got that all cleaned up, drop this in here. What I'm gonna do, and this is just me, I want the mount to sit as flush with the carpet as possible. My first thought was make a outline and cut the carpet out, but I don't wanna risk any fraying and frizzing of the carpet around the edges over the years. And then maybe it starts to even separate and it just gets really shabby and ugly. Then I thought, okay, I'll just cut away, but cut on the inside some, but then it is still gonna sit on the carpet and may create some space or gap. So where I think I'm gonna end is I'm gonna actually shave down the carpet underneath this, like I did the hatch lids wherever I needed to with the clippers. And then once I actually mount and screw these things in and get it bolted down really tight, it should pull it down deep enough into the carpet to where hopefully in the end it's completely flush. So right here, I'm just marking the edges with tape and I will shave off inside the tape. All right, so I've got it all marked up. Of course, when I shave, I'm still gonna go a little conservative inside the lines, just a little bit. If I go on the outside too much, I can't fix that. So better to go a little bit conservative on the inside once I start shaving this up. Drop this in here. Take this off. Yeah, I think that looks really good. Now that I'm putting pressure on it, I can already see where it's completely flush with the carpet. I'm not even gonna move this, guys. I'm really liking how this fits in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my holes and drill them out. All right, guys, this is just me being anal, just leaving it left and right. I know this is a perfect four by eight. Just wanna make sure everything comes out as perfect as possible. Got my wood here, I spray painted it black already, maybe about an hour ago, and it's pretty much dry. There's a couple wet spots still, but I think I can work with it. Again, this is pressure treated wood. This side will be touching the inside of the hatch, and it'll be wood to wood. It'll be really wood to paint, but you guys get the idea. This will go in here like this. So there's no aluminum touching there at all. I'm gonna drill through, mark my holes, pull this wood off, drill through the rest of the way, and then repeat that process for the aluminum sheet. I got everything drilled out. I first drilled into the plywood and then into the aluminum. All six holes and the main hole for the pedestal seat. 
All that's left is mounting this on here. So I just ran out to Home Depot. It's been about an hour. Went and got some shorter screws. I had three and a half inch screws. I'm trying out two inch to see if that works. And then if not, I do have two and a half also. The two inch looks like it's gonna work out perfectly. The screws won't stick out too much, but it will pick up on the lock nut part of the nut. Before I do the final installation here, I'm gonna go ahead and put some silicone inside the wood where I cut made the cutout. This is just to protect the unsealed hole that I made in this lid. You've seen me use this throughout the build. This is 3M marine grade silicone sealant. I'm pretty excited about this. I've been taking a long time to figure out how exactly I wanted to reinforce the pedestal seat because I would hate for it to rip out. This lid is gonna take quite a bit of pressure just using the seat day in and day out. And I think I, this is a pretty good solution. And I haven't seen any videos out there really that go through this on how they did it for a hatch lid. So I'm hoping this video helps out a lot of people who may be faced with this same situation where their only option is to install their pedestal seat in the lid of one of their hatches. This wasn't the ideal situation for me, but of course, when I had moved the foot tray back, it forced me to have to use the hatch lid for my pedestal seat. Well, I'm feeling really good, guys. I'm feeling like this is gonna work out really well. I mean, the, the top looks really amazing. I'm actually very happy I went with putting the aluminum plating behind the wood. As I'm tightening it down, I can see where it's pressing into the wood big time. And if I didn't have the aluminum sheet here, this stuff would just dig right into the wood. That goes like that. Oh man, I am super excited. Look at this, coming together. All right guys, let's get the seat on here. Tighten this guy up. This looks absolutely amazing. Everything is installed. I'm very happy about this. As you can see, the mount is actually a little bit below the carpet line, which is nice. I will never like stub my toe on this or trip over it, fall out the boat, anything crazy like that. Well guys, it's been about seven months since I've done this installation and I haven't fallen out the boat yet. The pedestal seat install is holding up perfectly. I can't be more satisfied. And I think I mentioned this in the video, but in case I didn't, I did install two latches, one on each side of the seat to give it extra stability on the actual hatch lid. This supports the hatch so there's no rocking of the hatch as I'm using this. Also surprisingly, the strut that I use is just a single 10 pound strut. I actually thought I would need to upgrade the size of the strut, the power of the strut to be stronger to lift this lid because of the added weight. And as I mentioned, everything is linked in the description below. Don't worry about having to go and look on the internet and search to find the products that I use in this mod. It's all in the description box below. I'm currently working on a brand new mod almost done on this boat. I'm just enjoying changing this boat up and adding things to it as I go. This will be something new, brand new to the boat that I'll be dropping on the channel soon. We're super excited about 2021. Happy to leave 2020 behind. What a crazy year it was. Got a lot in store for the channel in 2021. We plan to add some different content to the channel like tournament fishing, night fishing. Also looking to continue modding John boats, guys. Yeah, I've decided. I'm gonna venture into some John boat modding. So stick around for that on the channel as well. Looking to have a blast. I'm gonna be bringing you guys along for the ride. With that being said, leave us a thumbs up on this video as always. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next video.